Um, okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming today. So today we have Yuji Kondo from Hiroshima University, who's going to tell us about the classification of left invariant pseudo-Romanian metrics and some new potently groups. So we have around um, 50, 55 minutes, and then we'll have uh, a round of questions. So ready when you are. Thank you very much for introduction and uh, uh, thank you very much for inviting me on this online seminar. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, classification of left invariant to the Riemannian metrics on some near potent Lie groups. Uh, this study is based on the joint work with Professor Hiroshi Tamar from Osaka State University. Okay, so uh, first of all, let me explain the contents of this talk. Uh, today's content, uh, today's talk consists of uh, four parts. The first one is an introduction and some preliminaries, including the statement of main result. And the second one is the outline of the proof. And the next, we have some comparisons with respect to uh, flat metrics for Lorentzian and non-Lorentzian cases, and with with respect to uh, classifications up to automorphisms and up to isometry. And finally, uh, we see some observations in the Riemannian and pseudo-Riemannian cases, uh, which is about uh, cohomogeneity zero action and the transitivity, and a uh, relation between a closed orbit and the best metric. Mm. Okay, so from the next slide, we will move on to the first part. Uh, this is the main result. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Lie group that we consider in this talk is uh, this direct product Lie group, which is uh, uh, the direct product of three-dimensional Heisenberg group and the Euclidean space. So the main result, main result says that uh, for any positive integers p and q with p plus q is greater than or equal to four, and then the number of left invariant to the Riemannian matrix of signature p, q on this Lie group up to scaling and automorphisms is as follows. Uh, number one is if p and q are greater than or equal to three, then the number is exactly 21. And number two is p is greater than or equal to three and q is two, then the number is 15. Number three is p is greater than or equal to three and q is one, then the number is six. And finally, P and Q are two, then the number is 10. Uh, I will explain the, the proof later, but the key idea is a group action on a flag manifold. So uh, in this talk, we are going to consider two kinds of classification for left invariant metrics. So I will explain uh, two equivalence relations for uh, left invariant metrics. Uh, let G, capital G is a uh, Lie group, and small G1 and G2 be uh, uh, two left invariant metrics on G, uh, which can be a Riemannian metric or pseudo Riemannian metric of the same signatures. <laughs> then we say that these two metrics are isometric up to scaling. If uh, there exists uh, some positive constant C and a different morphism phi G to G, uh, such that uh, for any point A and for any uh, tangent vector X and Y, uh, the differential of phi preserves inner products up to this positive uh, constant scalar. And moreover, we say that 
these two metrics are equivalent up to scaling and automorphisms. If uh, this diffeomorphism phi is a Lie group automorphism. Uh, please note that the main result is by the classification by uh, this uh, second equivalence relation. And uh, uh, it is easy observation that uh, if we have two left invariant metrics and uh, uh, they are equivalent up to scaling and automorphisms, then uh, these two metrics are isometric up to scaling. So from here, I'm going to talk about uh, preceding studies of about this study. Mm. Uh, first of all, on uh, left invariant Riemannian metrics, we know the next fact. Uh, G is a connected and simply connected Lie group. Then uh, there exists a unique left invariant Riemannian metric on G up to scaling and isometry. If and only if this G is isomorphic to uh, these three, uh, isomorphic to one of these three Lie groups, which uh, uh, the the abelian Lie group or the Lie group of the real hyperbolic space and the, uh, this direct product. Uh, here, uh, GRHN is the solvable part of the Iwasab decomposition of the identity component of SON1. And it acts simply transitively on the real hyperbolic space. Uh, uh, regarding this uh, theorem, as a natural question, we have that, uh, uh, how about the cases of non-Riemannian signatures for these Lie groups? So regarding this question, we have next theorems. Uh, up to scaling and asymmetry, there exists exactly three left invariant Lorentz metrics on H3. And uh, uh, for any signatures, there exists exactly three left invariant pseudo Riemannian metrics on GRHN. Uh, also, it is obvious that uh, in, uh, there exists a, a left invariant, uh, there exists a uh, unique left invariant pseudo Riemannian metric on uh, the Euclidean space, since this uh, Lie group is an abelian Lie group. So we can summarize these theorems as follows. Uh, uh, in the Riemannian case, uh, a, a Lie group admitting only one left invariant Riemannian metric up to scaling and isometry is uh, one of these three Lie groups. And uh, in, uh, for, for the cases of pseudo Riemannian metrics, uh, there exists a unique left invariant pseudo Riemannian metric on this Lie group. And, uh, exactly three left invariant pseudo Riemannian metric exists on this Lie group. But uh, for the cases of this direct product Lie group, uh, we know that there exists exactly three left invariant Lorentz metrics in the cases of n is equal to three. But we have not known that uh, for the cases of n is greater than or equal to four. So the uh, problem is uh, for any, uh, uh, how many, how many left inverse to the Riemannian metric on this Lie group up to scaling and isometry exists. Uh, but uh, it can be proved that uh, this uh, finite finite set 
by applying the results of this paper. Mm. So this is a recall of the uh, e of the equivalence relation, and uh, the main result is by the second equivalence relation. Uh, here, uh, let me ex let me emphasize that why do we consider this kind of classification? So let capital G is a uh, Lie group and P and Q be a positive integers. And we do not buy MPQG, the set of a uh, left invariant pseudo Riemannian metric of signature PQ. <laughs> uh, in differential geometry, a question that uh, does G admit a nice left invariant metric is one of active topics. Where I mean, uh, nice, nice metric is, for example, a flat metric or Einstein or rich certain metrics. <clears throat> However, in general, it is difficult to find out such nice metric. But as a not, as a important properties, uh, these curvature properties are preserved by scaling and asymmetry. So for example, uh, if we have two metrics G1 and G2 and assume that G1 is a flat metric and uh, these two metrics are, for example, asymmetric, then uh, also the metric G1, uh, G2 is also a flat metric. <clears throat> so we can consider uh, uh, th these kind of curvature properties as uh, properties of equivalence class. So I mean, uh, we can expect that it may be useful to study the coset space MPQG up to scaling and isometry. And uh, uh, in terms of this uh, coset space, we have a natural subjection from MPQG up to scaling and automorphisms to MPQG up to scaling and asymmetry. This is from the remark I explained before. So using the notation of coset space, we can summarize the uh, main result like this. And the key idea is a group action on a flag manifold. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> uh, in, in, in this talk, we are going to consider a class, classification of inner products instead of a classification of left invariant metrics. So I will explain the correspondence between uh, left invariant metrics and the inner products. Uh, P and Q are positive integers and the capital G is uh, connected and simply connected Lie group with its, its dimension is a P plus Q. And we denote this symbol by the Lie algebra of G. Uh, now we have that uh, the, the group of Lie group automorphisms is isomorphic to the group of Lie algebra automorphisms. Uh, this is because this Lie group G is a connected and simply connected Lie group. Also generally, uh, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of uh, left invariant to the Riemannian metric of signature PQ on G, Lie group G, and the set of an indefinite inner product of signature PQ on Lie algebra G, <clears throat> where P is the number of positive eigenvalues and the Q is the number of negative eigenvalues. So <clears throat> uh, in order to classify left invariant matrix up to scaling and automorphisms, uh, we have only to 
we have only to consider the, cl the uh, classifications of inner products by the action of uh, this group. Uh, where R cross of G is a subgroup of uh, general linear group such that uh, generated by non-zero scalar C and uh, Lie algebra automorphism phi. Uh, this subgroup acts uh, under the uh, under the identification as a vector space. Uh, R cross of G acts on in the products by this formula. So from now on, we are going to consider the inner, the space of inner products, and we put MPQ Lie algebra G is the set of an inner product of signature PQ. <clears throat> so by the above arguments, uh, we have uh, identification between MPQ G, MPQ Lie group G up to scaling and automorphisms. And uh, the orbit space of the action of R cross out G on MPQ Lie algebra G. Uh, uh, this is the, <laughs> the recall of the main theorem again. And, uh, from the next slide, Let's move on to the second part. So from now we fix some notations as uh, P and Q are positive integers with P plus Q is greater than or equal to four. And capital G is uh, this Lie group. And we denote its Lie algebra by uh, this notation. Uh, first bracket relation is given by this formula. Then uh, recall that uh, in order to classify left invariant matrix up to scaling and automorphisms, we have only to determine that this uh, determine this orbit space. Uh, first of all, uh, from a general theory, we have next facts. Uh, for any Lie algebra, MPQG is a homogeneous space and uh, its homogeneous, homogeneous expression is given by GLNR over OPQ. This is a pseudo Riemannian symmetric space. And also uh, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the double cosets GLNR divided by R cross of G from the left and the OPQ from the right and the GLNR divided by OPQ from the left and R cross of G from the right. So we have uh, <clears throat> these two identification between uh, uh, this orbit space and uh, this double coset space. And moreover, this double coset space identified with uh, this double coset space. <clears throat> In the case of this Lie algebra, uh, actually, R cross out G is a parabolic subgroup of GLP plus QR. And its matrix expression is given by like this. <clears throat> so uh, by this matrix expression, uh, we have that uh, GLP plus QR over R cross out G is a flag manifold for this the algebra. So uh, in the following arguments, we are going to consider a flag manifold. So for this purpose, we set the notation for the flag manifold. <coughs> for any K1 and K2, such that uh, satisfying this condition, uh, we denote by FK1K2 
the set of the pairs of VK1 and VK2 such that VK1 is a subspace of VK2. And also VK2 is a subspace of the entire space RP plus Q. And there the, their dimension is given by K1. <clears throat> Uh, using this notation for my flag manifold, we have an identification for this Lie algebra. Uh, GLP plus QR over R cross out G is equal to F1 P plus Q minus two. Mm. So summarizing the above arguments, we have, uh, uh, we, we, we can summarize as uh, follows. Uh, originally, we were going, we were considering the classification of left invariant matrix up to scaling and automorphisms. That is, we uh, we considered this uh, coset space. <clears throat> uh, but this coset space is identified with this orbit space. And moreover, this orbit space coincides with this orbit space. So to uh, so uh, to classify left invariant matrix, we have only to classify flux by the action of OPQ on this flux manifold. So. Uh, in order to classify flux by the by the action of OPQ, uh, we here some uh, we here set some notations. Uh, uh, denote the standard inner product of signature PQ on R P plus Q by this notation, and which is defined by this formula, where the matrix I P Q is given by this block decomposition. The, uh, the left upper block is the unit matrix of order P and the, the right down, right lower block is negative unit matrix of order Q. Mm. Uh, for any subspace V, we denote sign V and this inner product is the signature of the standard inner product restricted on the subspace V. <clears throat> and also we denote uh, the radical of V by this symbol, by this notation, and it's, uh, it is given by a subspace of V such that for any vector W, uh, v and W are orthogonal. Uh, we may omit the notation of inner products if ne not necessary. <clears throat> uh, here, please note that not necessarily uh, the radical of V is trivial. This is not, uh, this is because uh, the standard inner product is not positive definite on the entire space. <clears throat> uh, this proportion gives uh, equivalence conditions for classifications of in uh, for classifications of flags. <clears throat> for any positive integers p and q. Uh, for any pairs VK1 and VK2 and WK1 and WK2. The next conditions, number one and two are equivalent. And number one is there exists some matrix G in OPQ such that matrix transfers uh, these two pairs. And number two says that uh, all of the following conditions hold. So number one is 
sine VK2 is equal to sine WK2. And number two is sine VK1 is sine WK1. And number three is the dimension of the intersection of VK1 and the radical VK2 is equal to the dimension of the intersection of WK1 and the radical WK2. So by this proportion, we can see that every OPQ orbit is characterized by sine VK1 and sine VK2 and the, the dimension of the intersection with respect to the standard in the product. Uh, remember that we have only to classify flux by this action. And uh, uh, by, the, uh, by this proportion, uh, 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 each OPQ orbit is characterized by a sine V1 and sine Vp plus Q minus two and uh, the dimension of the intersection. V1 and the radical V P plus Q minus two. So if sine V1 is 0, 0, 001, which means that V1 is a degenerate line, now we need to know the dimension of the intersection. <clears throat> Since uh, we have to we have to distinguish two different cases. Uh, one uh, uh, one case is uh, V1 is included in the radical. And the other case is V1 is included in the uh, positive part and the negative part of uh, the, the direct sum of positive part and the negative part of Vp plus Q minus two. So uh, for this purpose, we set the new notion for signatures. Sine Vp plus Q minus two of V1 is defined by, if the dimension of the intersection is zero, then we denote sine V1 as usual. And if the dimension of the intersection is one, then we denote 0, 0, 001 null. So using these notations of signatures, we have these tables. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, there are uh, uh, there are all possible. Uh, the, the, the number of all possible signatures is uh, exactly 21. So in this case, uh, this table means that uh, there, are, uh, there are 21 left invariant to the Riemannian matrix of signature PQ up to scaling and automorphisms. Can I ask a question? Okay. Uh, so, so the signature of V1, um, if I'm not mistaken, was defined as the signature of the restriction of the standard pseudo-Romanian metric on R n to V1, right? Yes. So in this case, because V1 is just a line, right, it's basically either yes. just plus one, plus one or zero or, or minus one. Yes. What, what do you mean when you write zero, zero, one? Zero, zero, 001 yeah so for example, this uh for example uh so for example uh, uh, number 12 and 13 mm -hmm. in in the case of number 12 means that uh, v1 is included in the the direct sum of positive part and negative part of v p plus q minus 2 mm -hmm. so which means that uh in the case of number 12, V1 does not 
included in the radical of this space. Mm -hmm. And in uh, this case, number 13, uh, V1 is included in the radical. Oh, cool. so, uh, 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 so number, number 12 and 13 is, uh, num number 12 is uh, in this case, and yeah. 13 is this case. Uh -huh. I see. And what do you mean by, by, by this subscript null? Uh, I, I, I just, uh, I just wanted to emphasize that V1 is included in the oh. radical. So I, I, I didn't come up with any other, uh, notation. Yeah, I see. I see. All right. <clears throat> Thanks. And, uh, uh, for the other cases, for example, in this case, uh, for example, looking at uh, number uh, 15, uh, in this case, uh, Q is equal to two. So Q minus two is zero. So in the case number 15, the restriction does, uh, does not have the uh, negative direction. So number 15 does not appear in this case and similarly to the the other cases then the number is 21 and 15 and 6 and 10 so this table me this table completes that classification <clears throat> uh, but uh in the uh in the main result uh, i assume that p is greater than y equal to q but generally we have the uh, this remark <clears throat> for any positive integers p and q uh, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of pseudo riemannian metric of signature pq and a pseudo riemannian metric of signature qp so this remark means that we have completed our classifications of left invariant pseudo Riemannian metrics on this Lie group for every signature, not only this case, for every signature. <clears throat> and uh, moreover, by this result, uh, we have completed the classification of all left invariant metrics on <clears throat> uh, these three Lie groups up to scaling and automorphisms. But uh, not that uh, we have not completed yet the classification up to scaling and isometry. And I will explain it later. <clears throat> uh, actually, uh, this table character, uh, characterize uh, all inner products of signature PQ on uh, Lie algebra G. So for for the cases of this Lie algebra, the center of G is spanned by E1 to E P plus Q minus two. <clears throat> and the derived ideal of G is spanned by E1. So uh, the preceding table gives us uh, these two signatures with respect to an arbitrary in a product. So which means that every equivalence class of in a product of signature PQ on uh, this Lie algebra G is characterized by these two data. Uh, in the Laurentia case, we can see the classification visually. So I'll explain here. <clears throat> uh, remember that the number of Laurentian in a product left invariant Laurentian metrics is exactly six. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this diagram 
represent the classifications. Uh, in each picture, uh, the entire space R, Rn <coughs> is divided into three parts. The first part is the positive part, which, <coughs> which is outside of the light cone. <coughs> and the negative part inside of the light cone. And the degenerate direction, the light cone itself. Uh, so for example, in this picture, the center and the, the derived ideal are both in the positive direction, positive part. So which means that they are both positive definite. So I write here uh, plus and plus. The, uh, the, the uh, left plus means that the center is positive definite and the, the right plus is uh, the derived idea is positive definite. And also in this picture, the center intersects with the negative part and the direct the uh, derived idea is in the positive part. So here, a minus and plus. And in this picture, uh, the center intersects with negative part and also the derived idea is in the negative part. So here, minus and minus. <clears throat> and in this picture, uh, the center touches to the light cone, which means that the center is degenerate. And the uh, derived idea is in the positive part. So here, uh, zero and uh, plus. And in this picture, uh, the center intersects with the negative part. And uh, the derived idea is in the light cone, which means that the derived idea is, is degenerate. So uh, here, minus and zero. And in the bottom picture, uh, the center touches to the light cone. And also the derived idea is in the uh, light cone. So both uh, degenerate. So here, uh, zero and zero. Okay, so let's move on to the third part. Uh, first of all, uh, curvature properties, mainly flat metrics. The next result is in the Lorentz case. For uh, this Lie group, <clears throat> uh, there are exactly six left invariant Lorentz metrics up to scaling and automorphisms. And uh, all of them are rich sort of metrics. And uh, only one is flat metric, but the other five metrics are not Einstein. <clears throat> So this proportion means that <coughs> in the Lorentz case, a flat left invariant metric uniquely exists in the Lorentz case, but the non-Lorentz cases are different. <coughs> a flat left invariant should remain a metric on this Lie group always exists for any signatures. But for the non lorentz cases, which is that uh, if P and Q are greater than or equal to two, then a flat metric is that uh, is not unique, even up to scaling and automorphisms. Uh, but, for the pseudo Riemannian case, the next facts are well known. The first one is every left invariant pseudo Riemannian metric on a two step nilpotent Lie group is geodesically complete. So, therefore, this Lie group is a two step nilpotent, so this is a geodesically complete. 
And also, uh, simply connected space forms are isometric if and only if they have the same dimension, same signatures, and the same constant curvatures. So by this fact, uh, this Lie group equipped with a flat, a flat uh, pseudo Riemannian metric of signature PQ is isometric to the pseudo Euclidean space, where the pseudo Euclidean space RPQ is the pseudo Riemannian manifold with the standard in a a standard uh, pseudo Riemannian metric of signature PQ defined by this formula. So therefore, we have obtained uh, uh, these corollaries. <clears throat> a flat left invariant pseudo Riemannian metric of signature PQ on this Lie group always uniquely exists up to scaling and isometry. And moreover, uh, this Lie group with a flat left invariant pseudo Riemannian metric is a homogeneous Riemannian manifold. And its isometric group is given by the uh, semi direct product of OPQ and RP plus Q. <clears throat> and next, uh, classification up to isometry and uh, up to automorphisms. Uh, at first, uh, we describe for the Lorentzian case. Uh, there exist exactly six left invariant Lorentzian metrics on this Lie group up to scaling and automorphisms. But uh, studying the eigenvalues of rich operators and its eigenvalues are eigen spaces. We have the, this remark. Uh, there exist five or six left invariant Lorentzian metrics on this Lie group, up to scaling and isometry. Uh, please note that the classification up to scaling and automorphisms is not necessarily the same. As the, as the classification up to scaling and isometry. But uh, for the non Lorentz cases, two, two classifications are exactly different. So recall that uh, the number of left invariant to the Riemannian matrix of signature PQ up to scaling and automorphism for the non Lorentz cases is as like this. And uh, actually, uh, for example, in this case, there are four flat left invariant pseudo Riemannian metrics. And in this case and this case, uh, there are three flat left invariant pseudo Riemannian metric. Uh, but uh, up to isometry. Uh, the above flat metrics are isometric for each text signature. Uh, this is since uh, it is a simply connected space form. This this Lie group is a simply connected space form. So, which means that the number of the number up to scaling and isometry exactly decreases than the number of up to scaling and automorphisms. So finally, we will move on to the final part. <clears throat> uh, here again, we set the notations for the space of inner products. Uh, M MG uh, for any Lie algebra. Mg is the set of a positive definite in a product. And MPQG is the set of an inner product of signature PQ indefinite. 
In fact, these two spaces are homogeneous spaces. And uh, uh, Mg is uh, GLNR over ON, which is a Riemannian symmetric space. And MPKG is uh, GL, GLP plus QR over OPQ. This is a pseudo Riemannian symmetric space. Uh, so uh, we we uh, we want to classify left invariant matrix. So uh, in order to do that, uh, the framework that we want to consider is uh, these two asymmetric actions. In the Riemannian case, we consider the action of R cross of G on GLNR over ON. And in the pseudo Riemannian cases, we consider this action on GLP plus Q R over OPQ. So uh, in the Riemannian cases, we have the following proposition. Uh, for any Lie algebra, uh, this action is a proper action. So from the from the general theory of proper action, uh, every orbit of this action is a closed orbit. <clears throat> Moreover, uh, the entire space GLNR over ON is connected space. So uh, we have next proposition. If this action is cohomogeneity zero action, then uh, it is transitive action. Mm. Uh, this is because uh, if this action is cohomogeneity zero, then uh, there exists a open and closed orbit. And moreover, this space is connected. And of course, every orbit is non, not empty set so uh, open and closed orbit have to coincide with the entire space, which means that this action is transitive action. Um, but in the pseudo Riemannian cases, uh, we consider this action, but uh, this action has different property. Mm. In fact, in the cases of these two Lie algebras, uh, <laughs> similar to the Riemannian cases, this action is a cohomogeneity zero action, but not transitive. <clears throat> in fact, uh, the orbit through the standard inner product is an open orbit. But uh, the number of inner products up to scaling and automorphisms is uh, exactly three for this Lie algebra, and also three for this Lie algebra. And uh, depending on the signatures, the number is 21, 15, 10, or 6 for this Lie algebra. So this means that. Uh, for these two Lie algebras, uh, this action is not transitive. Mm. Uh, finally, I explain the relation between a closed orbit and the best metric. Uh, as I explained in the previous page, uh, this action uh, for, for the cases of this Lie algebra, uh, this action is cohomogeneity zero action, but not transitive. Uh, in fact, this action is not proper action. That is, there exists a non-closed orbit. And please note that a closed orbit can be characterized by degenerations of orbits. <laughs> and uh, this is 
this is a definition of degenerations. Uh, let O1 and O2 be two distinct orbits of this action. Then uh, we say that the orbit O1 degenerates to the orbit O2 if O2 is included in the closure of O1. Uh, in terms of degenerations, we can characterize a closed orbit as below. Uh, an, uh, an orbit is a closed orbit if and only if uh, this orbit O does not degenerate to any other orbit. Mm. Uh, so uh, by this remark, note that uh, in the Riemannian cases, degenerations of orbits never occur since every orbit is closed orbit in the Riemannian cases. And moreover, we can say that uh, degenerations of orbits are peculiar phenomena for the pseudo Riemannian cases. <clears throat> and uh, note that degenerations of orbits necessarily, step, necessarily stops at finite steps. So always a closed orbit exists, always exists. Uh, let's uh, let's see the degeneration of orbits in the Lorentz case by this picture. Uh, each six blue arrows means that uh, every degenerations. And for example, in for example, this uh, we this degenerations uh, we can see uh, uh, by a, by taking a sequence of this orbit such that uh, the center is gradually rising up to the light cone while the derived ideal is fixed. So we, uh, we can see that this orbit degenerates to this orbit. And uh, moreover, we can see this degenerations by taking a sequence of this orbit such that uh, the derived ideal is gradually rising up to the light cone. Uh, this orbit degenerates to this orbit. And uh, as you can see here, uh, this orbit does not degenerate to any other orbit. So which means that this is a closed orbit in the Lorentzian case. <clears throat> uh, uh, in terms of curvature properties, a closed orbit is very interesting. Uh, for the cases of this Lie algebra, uh, we fix uh, in a product and assume that this orbit is a closed orbit. Then uh, this in a product is a flat in a product. Uh, so uh, uh, this remark means that in short, a closed orbit is the best metric. Where well, I mean in this in this case, the best metric is flat metric. <clears throat> and uh, not only in the cases of this Lie algebra. Uh, this remark is true for uh, these two uh, Lie groups. So uh, as a natural problem, we have that uh, for any Lie algebra, a closed R cross of G orbit corresponds to the best metric where well, I mean the best metric is a metric close to flat metric. So if the answer of this question, this problem is yes, then 
we can expect that it would be useful to study a closed orbit to, uh, to find out a nice metric like flat or Einstein metric. Uh, okay, uh, finally, I, I will show the papers in which today's topics are studied. Uh, today's topics are according to these two papers and uh, mainly based on the, this, uh, the first one. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Eugene. Um, does anyone have any questions? I probably have one or maybe two. Uh, okay. So you mentioned that the, for any of these three, I mean, for, for the ideally in the algebra, it's kind of trivial, but for the, uh, for the Lie algebra of RHN and also for the Yorley algebra that you studied mostly, uh, the action of R cross times the automorphism group of G on GLN mod mod OPQ is not proper, uh, and there is but it's still of cohomogeneity zero, so there exists an open orbit. Uh, my question was: Is this open orbit like the only open orbit, or can there be any? Can can there be some? Ah, uh, so uh, your, so uh, your 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 question is that. Uh, your question is that uh, uh, for this Lie algebra, um, uh, open orbit is unique or not unique? Yes. Uh, uh, actually, uh, this is in the Lorentzian case, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the uh, and uh, uh, I I forgot I forgot that which orbit corresponds to the standard or standard in the product. But uh, in the Lorentz case, uh, these three orbit is uh, these three orbit are uh, open orbit. So in the Lorentz case. Mm. Uh, open, there are uh, three, exactly three open orbits. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, it probably makes sense because like it, it, for all three of them, it takes like kind of two steps to degenerate to the closed orbit. So they kind of must be of the kind of same dimension, the maximal dim dimension. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, but it's very interesting. Uh, okay, great. Uh, I also had one more question. So in December, we had Louis who talked about kind of the similar, sim similar business, but about the symplectic structures and left invariant symplectic structures. And I remember that, uh, again, the, the context there was that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, also new, new, simply connected nilpotently groups, which are close to being abelian. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the second um, uh, Lie group that you, in the three, in the list of three that you um, gave at the beginning. So we got the abelian one, we got the one with the Heisenberg uh, factor, which you considered. And then there is also the um, RHN um, Lie group, which if I'm not mistaken, is just a semi-direct product of R and RN minus one. Right. Sorry. Uh, so, if I'm, not mis if I'm not mistaken, the the Lie group of the hyperbolic space, the, the second one, which we denote G R H N, is just a semi-direct product of one-dimensional Lie group and uh, n minus one-dimensional Lie group. Uh, so basically, basically, it's like to, in the Yavasavi decomposition, you got the one-dimensional abelian part and n minus one-dimensional nilpotent part, which is also abelian. And then the the action it's basically like to give an n minus one dimensional vector space and one and to fix an operator on this n minus one dimensional space, if I'm not mistaken. And what 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 if I'm not mistaken, Louis did in his uh, work was to kind of 
allow this operator on this n minus one dimensional space to vary to be like maybe diagonalizable but not like the identity operator or something like almost diagonalizable um have you considered something like this no so you only worked with with the high with the third case mostly right yes mm -hmm. okay it, it, it kind of makes sense because these are the three Lie groups that appear in the we, we should need only one uh left invariant Romanian structure up to isometry so it kind of makes sense to only consider these three I was just uh, thinking me whether there were some other kind of Lie groups which are which have a large uh automorphism group or isometry group yeah but okay sorry uh okay are there any other questions hi can I ask a question Yes. Can you hear me? Sure, sure, sure. Ah, sorry. Um, uh, first of all, I have two questions. One is uh, regarding the result of Wolf that you mentioned that says that the number of uh, metrics is going to be finite. Is it possible to, is it something particular of this H3 times Rn or can it be applied to other nipotently groups? Uh, uh, this is, uh... Uh, this theorem is uh, uh, th this theorem follows that uh, uh, the, the 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 property of parabolic subgroup. So, in in this Lie group, in this case, uh, uh, the group R cross of G is a parabolic mm -hmm. subgroup. So, if R cross of G is a parabolic subgroup, then we can apply the result of, of, uh, of okay. yes. So it depends. Uh, so if I want to apply it to other nipotently groups, I should first compute the automorphism group. If it is parabolic, then maybe I get a finite number. Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, regarding, um, uh, you had a slide saying that, well, when you have the number of metrics and that the flat metrics were isometric. Uh, so uh, you pointed out that the, the classes up to automorphism and scaling were well, isometric, yeah, this one. Isometric classes are less. And what about the other non-flat metrics? First, do you know if they are equivalent or not up to isometry? And also, I was curious if they, what happens with the center? Is it uh, non-degenerate or degenerate in those cases for the non-flat metrics or for the flat? Thank you for question. Uh, 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 as of now, I, I know that only for the flat metrics, so, uh, mm -hmm. For the uh, for non flat metrics, I I I don't know the uh, the difference of uh, the classification up to isometric and up to automorphisms. So I I, I mean, uh, how can I say? Uh, 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 uh this this statement follows from the from follows from uh, uh, this proposition yeah so, so uh, for, for the non-flat in for principle non yes. uh, it is open what happens with the non-flat metrics yes so uh for non-flat metric i i don't i don't know okay Okay, thanks. Thank you.